Hey there and welcome to how-to videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to cover data types and levels of measurement. It's part of a large massively open online textbook called Introduction to Statistics. For more information check out mathandstatistics.com. So in this video we're going to look at quantitative versus qualitative. We're going to look at discrete versus continuous and we're going to look at all four levels of measurement. We'll take a couple of slides where we look at examples of each and then we will look at raw data in an Excel spreadsheet to see what this might look like uh, if you collected data and were evaluating the types of the variables. So we care about the type of a variable because knowing the type of variable, knowing whether it's quantitative or qualitative, knowing whether it's discrete or continuous and so on, helps to determine the different statistical methods and measures that are going to be used to evaluate and display that type of variable. So starting with quantitative, a variable is going to either be quantitative in nature or qualitative in nature. Quantitative variables are represented by data that are actual numerical values or quantities, such as height, weight, inches of rain, speed of a car, number of text messages, final exam scores, anything that's represented by a true real numerical value. Whereas qualitative variables are represented by data that are actually labels, descriptions, qualities, categories, and so on. Uh, hair color, eye shape, student ID number, football jersey number, skin tone are all qualitative variables. Generally, the most challenging uh, problem with differentiating between qualitative versus qu quantitative is when the variable is numeric but not actually a real quantity. Student ID number is a perfect example of this. Student ID number is a number, but that number has no real numerical meaning. It doesn't tell you anything about the student except a label. And so because of that, it's in fact qualitative data. Same thing with the football jersey number. That's not a true numerical value or measure of any kind. It's just a label uh, or a name, if you will, for that football player. Also qualitative. So just because something's a number doesn't make it quantitative. In order to be quantitative, the number has to actual, actually have a true numerical value or represent an actual quantity. The next two categories are discrete and continuous. Discrete variables are represented by data that take on either a finite number of values or a countable number of values. And what that actually means is between any two values in your data set, there's not the possibility for an infinite number of possible values. For example, the number of children in a classroom is a discrete variable. You can have six children in a classroom, you can have seven children in a classroom, but you cannot have any value in between. There's no way to have 6.43 children in a given classroom. So because of that, the number of children in a classroom is considered discrete. The number of heartbeats per minute, also discrete. A student ID number is discrete. Between any two ID numbers, there is not an infinite number of other possible ID numbers. Social security numbers are discrete. Phone numbers are discrete. Female shoe size is an interesting discrete example. Usually people get confused about that because female shoe size has half sizes. You can have size five, you can have size five and a half, size six, size six and a half, and so on. However, there are not an infinite number of shoe sizes between five and five and a half. In fact, those are the only two possibilities before you get to size six. From a mathematical standpoint, discrete variables are mapped to the countable number system. Continuous variables are represented by data that can, in fact, take on any number of an infinite possible values. So the average number of children per family, because we're using average here, it can take on any value. The average could be 2.104, it could be 2.1045, it could be 2.2378. It really depends on all the different number of children that people have in the US 
and then when we take the average of that, we get a measure that is in fact continuous. Uh, inches of rainfall, height, weight, distance, GPA, these are all continuous variables because there's an infinite number of possible values that these variables can take on. Now GPA is always rounded to two digits, two significant digits, but it is in fact continuous. Next is going to be the levels of measurement. There are four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Each one sort of builds on the one before it. Nominal data is data that is described essentially by names. It's qualitative data, it's discrete data, it has no order associated with it, it is non-numerical in nature, even if it's designated with numbers. For example, even if your gender is designated numerically, where one is female and two is male, it's still considered nominal data. There's no order going on here, and these numbers don't mean anything. They're just labels, one for female, two for male. You can't add them together, you can't compare them numerically. So in that case, it's nominal. Religion is a nominal variable, political alignment, hair color, no order associated with them, and the data is uh, cate categorical, descriptive, and so on. Ordinal variables have order that is implicitly associated, such as year in college. Year in college is still qualitative data, it's still discrete data. However, if you're a sophomore versus a junior, or a sophomore versus a senior, a senior is actually higher up, they're farther along in college. That implicit order makes that variable ordinal. Same thing with a company hierarchy, the day of the week, uh, and even ranking of pain level. This is all ordinal data. There's or order implied, but there's no real true intervals between any of the, the different values that these variables can take on. Interval variables are generally numeric in nature, such as the temperature in Fahrenheit or the time of day between 0 to 2400 hours. However, interval data has no true zero value. So while nominal and ordinal data tend to be qualitative, descriptive, discrete data, interval and ratio data tend to be quantitative, numerical, and sometimes, but not always, even continuous data. They can be discrete as well. There, this is not 100%, there are always unique examples, but this generally tends to be the case. Temperature in Fahrenheit is one of the most common uh, descriptions used for interval variable because it doesn't have a true zero, and we're all very familiar with that. The Fahrenheit temperature scale has a zero on the scale, but that zero does not mean no temperature. It does not mean no heat. In fact, you can be minus 18 outside, and still have some heat left over. It can be minus 32 outside and still have some heat left over. So even though there's a zero on the Fahrenheit scale, that zero does actually mean none. So it's not a true zero. However, the intervals between each temperature on the Fahrenheit scale are constant and consistent. That's why it is interval data. Same thing with the time of day when you count it from 0 to 2400. This 0 doesn't represent no time. It's just a value on the scale when you're determining what time of day it is. So again, no true 0. But the interval between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. versus 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., those intervals are fixed and consistent. And so again, that's interval data. Ratio data is generally numeric in nature. It is often uh, quantitative and continuous, but it can also be discrete. And it does have a true zero. Examples are distance, weight, height, income, GPA, test scores, and so on. So these are the four levels of measurement. So let's take a look at some variables and how we would label them according to these levels of measurement. Suppose you're asked to rank your pain on a scale from one to five. Because this scale is actually descriptive, it's attempting to describe your pain, 
these numbers are not numerical in nature. This one doesn't mean one. This five doesn't mean five. We can't add one and two and get three or anything of that nature. So this is definitely discrete, definitely qualitative, and definitely ordinal. There is order associated with this. It is not interval because we don't actually know whether between one and two and between two and three are the same, not only for you, but for other people using the scale. There'd be no way to make that comparison or distinction. The number of text messages sent in a day, that's ratio. It has a true zero, it's a numerical value. The height of a person, also true zero, numerical value. The day of the week, if you start at exactly the same time, is interval data. A person's religion, nominal. The year in college, ordinal. A person's social security number, nominal. GPAs, ratio. And then finally, we can look at these same examples but categorize them as qualitative versus quantitative, discrete versus continuous. We know that the pain ranking was qualitative and discrete. It definitely describes a quality of how you're feeling and it's discrete because there are one, two, three, four, and five. Those are the only possible options. Certainly not infinite in any way. The number of text messages, that's quantitative. It's a real numerical value. And it's discrete. You can send one text message, you can send 100. But you can't send 1.357 text messages. So that's discrete data. Height of a person, quantitative and continuous. The day of the week, qualitative and discrete. A person's religion, qualitative, discrete. Year in college, qualitative, discrete. Social security number, qualitative and discrete. GPA, quantitative and continuous. So if you were to collect raw data on a data set such as this one, taking a look at this data set, we have student ID, gender, height, GPA, test scores, the time of the exam, and the student's year in college. You'll notice that the student ID, even though it's represented by numbers, is qualitative, discrete, and nominal. Gender, same thing. Even though one represents female and two represents male, it is qualitative, discrete, and even though it has numbers, it is non-numerical, so nominal. Height is going to be quantitative, continuous, and ratio. GPA, same thing. Quantitative, continuous, and ratio. And so on and so forth. So hopefully this gave you a good overview of data types and levels of measurement, what that might look like in a data set. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoy the series.